second ever triathlon, first Olympic distance. And my coach, Tony Wolf, uh, had a TT bike that he wasn't gonna use anymore. And so we kind of made a deal and he gave me this uh, sweet TT bike, but I needed to change over my wheels to it, um, get the TT bike totally set up um, with my power meter, which the power pedals are so amazing because you can just swap them out and then you have the same power profile. And, and power meters are just essential for a long TT. Uh, I got a Wahoo Bolt and it came with a really nice mount that actually mounted straight on the TT bars, which is a huge help and uh, got that all dialed in. Really needed to make sure that my wheels weren't gonna be rubbing because these uh, the stands, node tubes is what I was running. Um, they're pretty wide. So then I started to wash the bike off because this bike hadn't seen much of uh, any sort of action. So I used the muck off stuff, which uh, kind of has this different stages you go through. And I don't clean bikes. It just doesn't, it's not what I do. But this stuff really makes it easy to make your bike sparkling and efficient. So I use their ceramic wax type stuff. Super awesome. I uh, got my GoPro set up uh, so that I could really document this, this suffer fest. I mean, the thing is that my TT bike needs to be on par because it's the only thing I'm gonna make up any time. I'm gonna lose time everywhere else, make up time on the TT. Wanted to also see the shoes going sockless. What does it feel like in road cycling shoes without socks? So I went out for a little ride got the position dialed in, started to kind of dial in the bike computer on what, you know how that looks and where the power is and that sort of thing. I was actually super surprised on how comfortable it was to ride cycling shoes without socks. Uh, grabbed my kit um, and uh, started to kind of pack my bag. Now I got a TT helmet, like a proper TT helmet from Pac. Super excited about that. Uh, the, the helmet saves a ton of time. So got that, started shoving everything into my backpack, getting it all ready. And then I needed to adjust my running shoes because the last time I did a, a triathlon, my shoes were just a nightmare. They were flopping all around. It was no good. But uh, I also needed to test it out to see if you know they felt good and, and that they went on good. So then I started searching out the TT segment of the Olympic course. It was gonna be about an hour effort uh, it's at elevation, it's at, I think it starts at 5,500 feet and goes up to like 6,500 feet, something like that. Has a, a max grading of 13%, so it's a very climby, um, I mean, I think you're climbing 3,000 feet in, you know, 23 miles. So then I started packing up the bike, getting it all ready to go over to my wife's parents' house, which was much closer to the event. dinner we had black beans and broccoli and onions and like this vegan sausage and potatoes super good super delicious um, it's just kind of a go-to meal for me for sure and then I had to try on the wetsuit my wife found a ten dollar ten dollar nine ninety nine ten dollar web uh, wetsuit at a local like thrift store so then I wanted to see how that fit Hey babe, yeah? can you help me? I'm so afraid it's gonna like zip my skin up. But I'm a little hot. I don't need that. I don't need that. See, but I'm hot, daddy. <laughs> what does a ten dollar wetsuit get you? I mean, not bad. Not bad. Just a surfer, bro. Just a surfer, man. Are you kidding me, Dan? <laughs> Are you kidding me with that? So woke up super early to get up there. The start of the race was at 8. 
we packed up my son and my wife. My daughter stayed with grandparents. And we started going up the hill, and you could really see the beautiful sun peering over the mountains. I started checking the weather, which at the start of my race was gonna be 49 degrees, which was, yeah, that, for me, that's just too cold. That's that's way too cold. Uh, but it was it is what it is. We're just gonna get it done. I smashed some blueberries. The breakfast really wasn't that big. It was some blueberries and strawberries, and that was about it. We drove through the town of Shaver, which is where the triathlon was being held. Cute little town with neat little shops. I've been here, up here plenty of times. And we went into uh, Camp Edison Campground and we're greeted by a bear. Hey, I'm looking for the triathlon. Yep, it's down the way. This is for you. Oh, stretch stick. Damn it. There we Thank go. you, man. I did not pre-register, so I was actually registering the day of, so I had to fill out, you know, a day of and a release and a, um, a triathlon, like one day license, because I only have my USAC license, but it was freezing. <laughs> oh, dude. okay, it's freezing. It's 44 degrees out. This lake is way higher than Bass Lake. So it just automatically, the water's gonna be way colder. Oh man, boy, this is, this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be interesting. So I started pulling everything out of the little pack that they give you and seeing, you know, about my uh, swim cap and what color that was. And then they had these numbers, these like stick on numbers instead of writing them on you, which it took me a real long time to try to figure it out, but it was like a tattoo. So you had to get water. I spit on it and then rub the tattoo on. <laughs> so stupid, dude. <laughs> What is this? That's. It's like, in theory, that would be a good idea. But when you're sitting in a car and it's freezing outside and you don't, like, dude. Not the ticket. After completely botching the arm one, I actually got the hang of it and the leg one came out all right. Pretty decent. The wife pinned me up and then it was time to suit up and get it in the water. So everyone takes off and I had been practicing a little bit, but basically swimming about halfway out to the first buoy. My wife's trying to find me. She's looking everywhere. Uh, but what she doesn't know is that I've completely freaked out and uh, I've forgotten what my body is and how to use it. And so you can see right here for some reason, oh, there's me like on my back. What are you doing? I, I'm so far away from that first buoy uh everyone is so far ahead of me it was really crazy and so i i couldn't breathe so i was just basically backstroking the whole way when i came out of the water i was 20 minutes down 20 minutes uh my head was spinning my body was like aching um it was very weird i don't know if other people get this but i was so disoriented like my balance i couldn't keep my balance i couldn't really think very well I was super cold, super wet, and so you can see I'm stumbling around. Um, I think my transition time was about two minutes, and the winner's trans transition time was 20 seconds. So I got on the bike and then just kind of snapped right into it.
so as expected, my bike leg went pretty well. I did an hour and six minutes for the 23 miles and 3,000, 3,500 feet of climbing, something, around, something like that, uh, which was six minutes faster than the second best bike leg time. And that second best leg bike time was from the winner of the overall event. Now that guy swam 20 minutes faster than me, and I think ran 10 minutes faster than me. Uh, but whatever, you know, my bike leg was still was still pretty good. Uh, I felt great on the bike the whole way. I could have probably gone a little harder. I felt myself coming into the run transition uh, with a lot of energy left. And there, after perhaps a less than stellar swim. Hey, he's still talking off the bike. How about that? So, got back in from the bike, and my transition time here was much quicker because all I had to do was throw my shoes on. Uh, the bike was pretty fast, um, and then, but I was sort of in like no man's land. There wasn't really anyone in front of me that I could see, no one really behind me. So, I just kind of took off um, at a pace. I've never ran six miles, like, period. So, this was going to be a new experience for me. But the thing was that it's a trail run. So it wasn't necessarily just a flat deal. I mean, you're hopping over logs and you're, you know, running up super steep climbs. Uh, trail running is is much different than just like running on pavement or whatever. But actually, I, I liked it. It was easier on my knees. Um, it was kind of fun to be running through these trees and these trails. That was neat. But you definitely couldn't see anyone ahead of you. Um, and I went the wrong way twice. Um, I don't know how anyone else figured out how to go the right way, but I ended up like dipping back in on the course and, and added a little bit of distance to me. Had to pass two guys twice actually, because I passed them and then all of a sudden they were ahead of me and I'm just like, I don't, how'd you teleport? Like that guy behind me, it was the second time I've passed him. Uh, but I did, I ended up passing two guys. Uh, I passed one guy for third in my age group. Um, I wish that I had gone faster, but again, I couldn't tell, couldn't see anyone ahead of me and rolled it in. So finished off the event feeling pretty good, um, but, but definitely waxed. Had really no idea where I finished. Um, I, was, I was hoping that I finished on the podium, but I didn't know. So I grabbed my stuff and headed back to the car, kind of got some more blueberries and bananas, had a protein shake, sort of just kind of decompressing on how that event all went. So then we headed in because they were doing some other things. They had like real beer and root beer and kind of just had a little atmosphere thing going on. So my son and I shared a root beer, which he thought it was beer. So he was trying to like be all cool. <laughs> so funny. Uh, they had some music going on, some live, live music, you're right by the lake. From Bass Lake, Tyler Pierce, come on up, Ty. Third place in the 3039. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So I did get on the podium. Um, it was the guy I passed during the run that got me into third in my age group, which was really... Uh, satisfying uh, packed up the bike and we headed over to this little shop little kind of area in shaver where they had this uh, super awesome vegan protein shake it was like a cashew date protein shake and I was zonking out in there waiting for our food got that protein shake in me it was um, delicious and headed back to our home in Bass Lake the wife was passed out my son was passed out but the drive is pretty and uh, had some good tunes on. We got back into the, the big trees and we went to Deucey's, kind of the little restaurant in Bass Lake and just had our little family dinner. Um, I had a like a black bean portobello mushroom burger with tons of avocado. It was super delicious, so big, just fantastic. I had some uh, garlic fries and sweet potato fries. And then we went home and kind of played with the new baby, uh, Winter, and she was stoked on, on it. All right, so let's decompress on uh, on this race. My first Olympic distance triathlon, which is 1,600 yard swim, which is a mile. Uh, and then a 
three mile bike, which had over 3,000 feet of climbing. The run was, uh, was not just on pavement, it was on trails. You had to run over rocks and logs and it was steep little climb. I mean, so man, it was, yeah, the deceleration, deacceleration that you have to do running downhills, you know, man, that really took a toll on the legs. So I got a finisher's medal, which is cool. Looks like it's also a bottle opener. But I'm not really, finishing a thing isn't, it's not what I'm after. I'm after like a legitimate, hey, you beat other people type deal, which are like comes apart, which I don't understand quite why that is. Third in my age group, 30 to 39, which was the most competitive age group, it had the most people, at least for the men in it, and it had the winner who, uh, this guy Tatum, dude, he's just rocked socks, man. The guy looked like a triathlete, right? His swimming was insane. He was the first out of the water, first back on the bike, and first in the run. But so, uh, had a wetsuit. That made a huge difference in the water, temperature-wise, but I didn't really feel super buoyant. It was a $10 wetsuit, so, you know. It's, uh, and I had swam a little bit, right? In my, at Bass Lake here, I swam a little bit, but the distances I was swimming, I just, I didn't understand what actually a mile, just right off the bat, I was freaking out. Couldn't breathe, couldn't really get going, the goggles were fogged up. By the time I got to the first buoy, I legitimately was like, I'm going to quit. I'm done, I'm not gonna do this, because I really am confident that I'm not going to uh, make this swim. And so I just had to actually get on my back and I backstroked basically a mile <laughs> in the water because it was the only way I could breathe. Uh, being on my back, I could breathe as I wanted. If I put my face in the water, I just, I, I couldn't breathe. I don't know how people breathe in the water. It's ridiculous. Even with the little bit of practice that I had in swimming, it felt like I had it down where I could kind of like glide on one side and do this sort of like get smooth. But as soon as I was out there, man, I was just sinking. Got out of the water, like la dead last, right? Tried to get on my bike and just by, st I don't know how, the, I don't know if the other people feel this way, but dude, I'm like super disoriented. I'm like way dizzy. My head's throbbing, my like fingers are numb. And so I'm trying to put my shoes on, just the same thing as like last time, but this was way worse. Got on the bike, headed out with a power meter, I know what I'm gonna do, and so I just, I, ca I kept it there, my Wahoo um, bolt, the element bolt was so awesome because it has these little lights, shows you what zone you're in, so I just kind of focused on keeping it around zone three, which I did. I did decent power um, for, I think it was like about an hour effort. I caught a lot of people, passed a lot of people, uh, but I could see the top guys just, dude, they were like two miles ahead of me on the road. And honestly, my fitness felt really good during the run. Uh, I actually worked into it. I was I was probably feeling the strongest out of the whole day during the run, which is not what I expected. So overall, Olympic distance versus sprint distance, I liked the Olympic distance better other than the swim. I liked being on the bike for longer. Felt super good on the TT bike, just comfort wise. Just felt really at home on it. But here's the thing is, I like to get outside of my comfort zone. There was a moment in swimming, <laughs> five minutes in, where I'm just being washed with water, I can't breathe, I'm freaking out, I look up and just the distance I'm gonna have to swim is at that point insurmountable. There's no way I'm gonna be able to do that. And so I thought about quitting. And then I had this thought like, this is why you do this. This is why you compete. This is why you go outside of your comfort zone. This is why, you know, it'd be very easy to say, well, I hadn't trained running, I haven't trained swimming, so I'm gonna, I'll wait for next year. I'll push this off to next year. But no, man, I'm just gonna do it. And it's just gonna see what happens. And in those moments, you're, you expand your, uh, your spectrum of, of life, man. It's just, I know that sounds super hippie. I'm faced with this moment where I'm just deer in the headlights, like, whoa. And that humbles you and it centers you, it grounds you. Look, I love to do well. I want to compete and do well. Whatever it is, man, when you compete, you put yourself on that chopping block and you see just how good other people are. Because sometimes, man, if you stay in your comfort zone, you're like, ah, oh, I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good. That's not gonna make you expand, grow, be better. So let's be better. Get out there, do it. Who cares, right? Figure it out. You'll figure it out as you go. I've always said that. Uh, to the Shaver Lake Triathlon, I think overall the event was pretty cool. They had a lot of cool volunteers, a lot of people were really hyped up and pushing you and going, 
So yeah, man, it was good. I'll be back next year for sure. I think it comes at a good point in like road cycling. It's, it's kind of over, uh, but I'll do more triathlons. I just need to swim more. I need to like, com I need to make a commitment. It's like, do I actually want to be better at swimming? And then invest that time. And I haven't made that commitment yet. And I don't know if I'm gonna. So, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. As always, Vegan Cyclist. Yeah!